love the fragrance of no mind except from horizons beyond the mind love is the fragrance of no mind no mind has nothing to do with mind it is not the extension of mind you have to understand that no mind cannot arise out of mind it is not a growth of mind also it is not the continuity with the mind either instead it is discontinuity it is as discontinuous as disease is with health the health does not arise out of disease health arises when disease is no more disease was continuing and was invading the space and was not allowing the health to blossom disease was continuing and was invading the space and was not allowing the health to blossom the moment disease is no more health blossoms the disease has to be removed first it is like a rock blocking the path of a small spring you remove the rock and the spring starts flowing profusely and the flow does not arise out of the rock the rock was blocking it the rock was a block so is the mind mind is the block for no mind mind is the block for harmony oneness mind is the block for bliss harmony and love no mind simply means that which is not mind at all how can it arise out of mind then if it arises out of the mind it may be super mind but it cannot be no mind that is where i differ from shri aurobindo he talks about super mind a super mind is the same mind yet more decorated more cultivated more cultured more sophisticated stronger and more integrated however all the more it is the same old mind buddha says not super mind instead no mind not super soul instead no soul not super individuality or super self but no self and buddha used the word anatta for no self buddha uses the word anatta that is where buddha is unique and is understanding the deepest a super mind is a growth and no mind is a leap a jump a transcendence the no mind has nothing to do with the mind at all both no mind and mind never meet even they never encounter each other when mind is there no mind is no more when no mind is there the mind is not instead it has dissolved they never say even hello to each other because two can never meet the presence of one is necessarily the absence of the other so remember it that is why i say shri aurobindo never became enlightened he remained polishing the mind he was a great mind but to be a great mind is not to be enlightened so to burton russell is a great mind but to be a great mind is not to be enlightened frederick nietzsche is another great mind both shri aurobindo and nietzsche have many similarities nietzsche talks about the superman and shri aurobindo talks about super mind they are similarities but the superman will be a projected man a superman will be this man and all the weaknesses destroyed all the strengths is strengthened but this this is man bigger than this man is stronger and higher too
is still on the same wavelength or the same ladder, there is no radical change. But there has been a discontinuity. No mind means discontinuity with all that you are. You have to die for no mind to be born. So the first thing you inquire, is it possible that the no mind evolves quite naturally out of the mind? No, indeed it is not. It does not evolve out of mind. No mind is not an evolution. Instead no mind is revolution. The mind is dropped and suddenly you find the no mind is there. It has always been there, mind was clouding it, creating obstructions, making you confused and was not allowing you to see that which is. So it is not an evolution. And you ask, is it possible without the struggle and anguish? It has nothing to do with the struggle or anguish. No mind has nothing to do with the struggle and anguish. It does not come out of the struggle or anguish. Anything that comes out of a struggle or anguish will carry the wounds within. Even if those wounds are healed, the scars will be carried. It will be again continuity. The struggle and anguish is not for the no mind. The struggle and anguish arises because the mind struggles to keep itself in power. Always remember this. The struggle and anguish arises because the mind continuously struggles to keep itself in power. The fight is given by the mind. The mind does not want to go. Instead, the mind, instead the mind wants to stay. The mind has become so powerful that it possesses you. It says, no, I am not going to get out. I am going to stay here forever. Such is the nature of the mind. All struggles and anguish is because of the mind. The no mind has nothing to do with it. And you will have to go through this anguish and this struggle. If you do not go through the anguish and the struggle, the mind is not going to leave you. And again I repeat, the no mind is not born out of your struggle. Out of your struggle only evolves the mind. Maybe somewhat stranger, the no mind comes without any struggle. The rock gives you the struggle. It obstructs your way and then to continue your way you have to struggle. It does not want to move. It has remained in that place for centuries. Therefore, who are you to remove it? The mind re resents and says, what is spring are you talking about? There is none. I have been here for centuries and I know there is none. Forget all about it. But you want to remove the rock? The rock is heavy. It is rooted in the earth. It has remained there for so long. It has attachments. So it does not want to go. And it knows nothing of the spring. But you will have to remove this rock. Unless this rock is removed, the spring will never arise. The no mind has nothing to do with your acts, but the mind will not go. You will have to hammer and cut and you will have to do a thousand and one things for the mind to vanish. The mind wanders is the very idea of no mind, which seems to be in the mind and yet transcending the mind, a seed-like form of no mind. No, it is not so. The seed of no mind does not exist in the mind. 
The mind cannot contain even the seed of no mind. The mind has no space to contain it. No mind is vast like the infinite sky. How can it be contained in a tiny space, the mind? The mind is already full of thoughts, desires, fantasies, imaginations and memories. There is no space for no mind. In the first place it is very tiny. It cannot contain the no mind. In the second place it is so full, overcrowded and so noisy. The no mind is silent, the mind is noisy, the mind cannot contain it, the mind has to cease. In that cessation is the beginning of a new life, a new being, a new realm. Mind wanders. Can one meditate on these mind transcending concepts like eternity, nirvana and death? Can you meditate on the concept of eternity, nirvana or death? Those so-called mind transcending concepts are still concepts and are of the mind. When you are thinking of eternity, what will you do? You will think. When you are thinking of nirvana, what is going to happen? Your mind will spin and weave and your mind will give you beautiful ideas about nirvana but that will be all mind work projection of the mind what can you think about death what will you think if you think about the day what would you think if you think about death what would you know what do you know about death how can you think anything about that which you do not know. Mind is perfectly capable in repeating the known. However, with the unknown it is impotent. You do not know eternity. All that you know is time oriented. Even when you think of eternity, it is nothing but lengthened time or stretched time. Still it is time. What do you know about Nirvana? All that you have heard about it or read about it is not Nirvana indeed. The word Nirvana is not Nirvana and the concept of Nirvana is not Nirvana. The word God is not God and all the pictures and all the statues that have been made of God and its various forms have nothing to do with him because he has no name or form. That which is formless and nameless cannot be put into finiteness. And what are you going to think about death? How can you think about death? You have heard a few things. You have seen a pe few people dying. But you have not. But you have never seen death. You have never seen it face to face. And when you see people dying, you believe that you know death. When you see a man dying, what do you see? Now he breathes no more. Is This is all that you see. His body has become cold. This is all that you can see. What more? Is this death? The body becoming cold or breathing is stopping his death. Is this all? What has happened to the innermost core of the person? You cannot know without dying. You cannot know without experiencing. The only way to know the unknown is to experience it. So these concepts would not help. They may rather on the contrary strengthen the mind because the mind will say, look, I can even supply you mind transcending concepts see what i am doing for you keep me with you always i will help you to become enlightened without me you will be nowhere without me how can you think about death nirvana and eternity i am absolutely essential without me 
you will not be anything at all. The mind goes on convincing you like this. No, these meditations will not help. You have to see it. You have to see this that the mind is not going to help you at all. When you see the point that mind is not going to help at all, in that very helplessness, in that very state, there is silence and all stops. If the mind cannot do anything, then nothing is left to do. Suddenly all thinking is paralyzed. It is pointless. In that paralysis, you will have the first glimpse of no mind. In that paralysis, you will get the first glimpse of no mind. Remember, just a small window will open first. In that stopping of the mind, you have the taste of no mind for the first time. And then things will start moving then it will be easier for you to get lost into the boundarylessness. You cannot meditate. You have to go into it. Meditating upon it is a pseudo-activity. It is the way to avoid or escape. You are afraid of death, but you think about death. You are afraid of nirvana, but you think about nirvana. Thinking gives you the feeling that you are capable even of thinking about death and nirvana. Mind is very cunning. Mind cannot explode while you are thinking. About what you are thinking does not matter. While you are thinking, the mind cannot explode. The mind will be enjoying it and in that very enjoyment, you are thinking that you are exploding. It feels like I am pushing over my limit and I get afraid of becoming a schizophrenic. You need not be afraid of ever becoming a schizophrenic because you already are. And for that matter everybody is. Mind is a schizophrenic. Because mind knows nothing of unity, mind is always split. Mind always has alternatives to be or not to be. To do this or to do that, mind is always indecisive. Even if you choose something, it is only part of the mind that chooses it. The other part remains against it. The mind is never total, so mind is schizophrenic. You need not be afraid of that. To be in the mind is to be schizophrenic. Only Buddhas are beyond it. The whole humanity is schizophrenic, more or less. When your schizophrenia goes beyond a point, then you have to visit the psychiatrist. But the difference is only of degrees. The difference is only of quantity not quality. Even between you and your psychoanalyst there is only a difference of degrees. Remember mind will not help. Mind cannot help. Mind can only hinder. Seeing this no mind arises. And it is not that you bring it. You cannot bring no mind. No mind arises on its own accord. And when it arises, love springs forth. Harmony, bliss and oneness gushes like a stream of an unending reservoir.